In Norway, a dedicated team of researchers is currently engaged in an extensive exploration of a frozen lake where an unidentified flying object reportedly collided 77 years ago. This intriguing investigation, captured in a detailed video, aims to shed light on the enigmatic events that unfolded in the village of Roros in the year 1947. The quest to uncover the truth behind this legendary sighting involves meticulous examination and analysis of the area, along with interviewing eyewitnesses who have been passed down the story of what happened. The village's mayor during that period asserted witnessing a mysterious object descending and hitting Lake Dupsjön. According to photographer Ru Rostad, the mayor described it as resembling a rocket and emitting a considerable amount of noise. Ru Rostad further recollected that this unidentified craft abruptly changed its course and smoothly landed in the lake. This intriguing incident was documented by Coast to Coast AM. It is worth noting that witnesses like Ru Rostad played a crucial role in providing detailed and first-hand accounts of the event. The mayor's vivid description and Ru Rostad's recollection shed light on the surreal nature of what happened. The search for the elusive craft has been futile up to this point, but a breakthrough has occurred with the utilization of advanced sonar search technology, leading to a fascinating revelation. Despite prior unsuccessful efforts to locate the presumed vessel, recent advancements in sonar scanning have unveiled an intriguing development. Rostad is leading the search efforts and has disclosed that advanced technology has identified an anomaly measuring 46 feet in length and 10 feet in width. The sonar imaging displayed in the video appears to hold potential for individuals seeking discoveries, yet despite extensive exploration by the deep dive team in the lake, no findings have been made as of yet. This discovery, under the guidance of Rostad, has sparked intrigue and anticipation among enthusiasts eager to unravel the mystery hidden beneath the water's surface. The detailed analysis and persistent search efforts to uncover the enigmatic anomaly reflect the team's unwavering commitment to discovering the truth behind what happened. In spite of the ongoing unresolved status of the situation, Arnulf Loken, a prominent Norwegian UFO researcher, expressed his enthusiasm regarding the search, characterizing it as exciting. According to Loken, this investigation represents a significant milestone in Norway's UFO exploration endeavors, being deemed as one of the most extensive operations in the history of the country dedicated to studying unidentified flying objects. Interestingly enough, this encounter reminded many of the Falcon Lake incident. Inarguably, a profoundly captivating and potentially one of the most reliable UFO sightings, not just in the year 1967, but conceivably throughout history, took place in the scenic landscapes of Canada. This extraordinary event was not only remarkable for its time, but has also left a lasting imprint on the annals of UFO encounters. The incident that took place on the 20th of May 1967, commonly known as the Michalak encounter, continues to be a topic of interest and investigation in present times. On that particular day, Stefan Michalak, a 51-year-old mechanic, was exploring the rugged and dense woodlands bordering Falcon Lake in pursuit of rare, valuable, or intriguing minerals. This expedition took place within the confines of Whiteshell Provincial Park in the Manitoba region of Canada, a significant distance of approximately 80 miles from his residence in Winnipeg. While engrossed in examining what he believed to be a piece of quartz crystal, a sudden uproar from the surrounding wildlife captured his attention. Gazing skyward, Stefan observed two luminous red oval-shaped entities through the canopy of trees, swiftly advancing towards him. Upon closer inspection, he noticed the unusual speed at which these objects were approaching, escalating the intrigue of the encounter. The unexpected convergence of wildlife commotion and the emergence of the enigmatic glowing shapes infused a sense of curiosity and mild apprehension within Stefan, prompting a mixed rush of emotions. The surreal nature of the sighting and the swift movement of the objects left him momentarily stunned, his mind contemplating the possible origins and intentions of these mysterious visitors. As he gazed ahead, observing the scene unfold before him, one of the objects descended gracefully, finally settling on a cluster of rugged rocks situated roughly 160 feet away from his vantage point. Simultaneously, the second object remained suspended above him at a distance of about 15 feet, seemingly in perfect equilibrium. Suddenly, without warning, it swiftly ascended into the sky 
propelled by an unseen force, disappearing into the vast expanse above. In a secluded spot on the rocks, the mysterious object maintained its position, mirroring the stillness of Michalak, who was observant of the unfolding events. A sensation of intense warmth enveloped the air, creating an unusual ambience around him. The object underwent a remarkable transformation, a spectacle that captivated Michalak's attention as it cycled through a series of color changes. Initially crimson, then transitioning to a somber gray, before finally settling into a radiant hue resembling hot stainless steel embellished with a golden aura. In his later account, Michalak described the door of the craft as having a unique combination of being square yet with rounded edges, further detailing how a vibrant purple light emanated from within the mysterious object. Additionally, he vividly recounted experiencing waves of warm air enveloping him and the unmistakable scent of sulfur lingering in the air. The mention of the sulfur smell holds particular significance, as it is a common element noticed in various encounters of close extraterrestrial contact. This observation not only adds to the authenticity of his experience, but also aligns with recurring themes in similar reports of such encounters. As he approached the mysterious craft, a distinct buzzing noise, reminiscent of a rapid-running miniature electric motor, resonated in his ears. The closer he moved, the clearer the voices became, and he gradually discerned that they were indeed human, albeit with extremely high pitches. The atmosphere around the craft seemed to hum with an otherworldly energy, intensifying his curiosity. As he inched closer, the voices grew in clarity, eventually revealing their human quality, albeit significantly high-pitched. Initially crimson, then transitioning to a somber grey, before finally settling into a radiant hue resembling hot stainless steel embellished with a golden aura. In his later account, Michalak described the door of the craft as having a unique combination of being square yet with rounded edges, further detailing how a vibrant purple light emanated from within the mysterious object. Additionally, he vividly recounted experiencing waves of warm air enveloping him and the unmistakable scent of sulfur lingering in the air. The mention of the sulfur smell holds particular significance, as it is a common element noticed in various encounters of close extraterrestrial contact. This observation not only adds to the authenticity of his experience, but also aligns with recurring themes in similar reports of such encounters. As he approached the mysterious craft, a distinct buzzing noise, reminiscent of a rapid-running miniature electric motor, resonated in his ears. The closer he moved, the clearer the voices became, and he gradually discerned that they were indeed human, albeit with extremely high pitches. The atmosphere around the craft seemed to hum with an otherworldly energy, intensifying his curiosity. As he inched closer, the voices grew in clarity, eventually revealing their human quality, albeit significantly high-pitched. In a bid to establish communication, he vocalized in a variety of languages, spanning from English and Russian to French, Italian and Ukrainian. However, his calls remained unanswered. Drawing nearer to the enigmatic vessel, he found himself in such proximity that he could almost feel its surface. Equipping himself with the protective eyewear typically utilized for chiseling rocks, he resolved to peer inside the craft. With a deep breath, he cautiously extended his head through the entrance, intrigued by what lay beyond. The mysterious allure of the alien structure beckoned him, stirring a mix of apprehension and curiosity within him. In the midst of his surroundings, a complex network of vibrant lights awaited him, some flickering incessantly. Among them were straight beams traversing both horizontal and diagonal paths. As he observed, the lights seemed to lack any discernible arrangement or order, operating in what he perceived as a haphazard manner. Shifting his focus downward, he scrutinized the floor, detecting a seamless surface without any visible seams or connections to the overhead walls. This peculiar lack of distinct boundaries is a recurring detail often noted in numerous encounters involving unidentified flying objects. The spacecraft's tilting movement resulted in one of its machines coming into contact with the man's chest, causing him to experience an immediate and intense searing pain across his torso. What alarmed him even more was the fact that his glove had partially melted from his hand and his shirt had caught fire. In response, he quickly moved away from the craft, shedding the burning shirt in the process. At that moment, he also observed that the craft had lifted slightly off the ground. Suddenly, 
a rush of hot air enveloped him, and just as swiftly as it had appeared, the object ascended rapidly into the sky. This series of events left him with a mixture of physical discomfort and awe at the disappearing craft. Upon reflection, Makalak paused to compose himself, his mind clouded with bewilderment and searing agony as he gradually made his way towards his parked vehicle situated along the highway. His destination was Misericordia Hospital, where he sought treatment for the severe burns that plagued his chest. After seeking medical assistance, he proceeded to inform the Royal Canadian Mounted Police about the incident, although their response was limited to compiling a basic report, offering minimal assistance in addressing the situation. Upon the emergence of the incident in the local media and radio broadcasts, a plethora of UFO investigators were swiftly drawn to the scene, driven by a keen interest to engage with Michalak and delve deeper into the mysterious occurrence. Notably, Michalak bore a peculiar checkered burn mark on his chest, suspected to have been sustained during his contact with the machinery inside the unidentified object. In the aftermath, he grappled with severe illness for an extended period, marked by persistent bouts of intense nausea and the struggle to retain any form of sustenance. Furthermore, several weeks later, Michalak began to manifest distressing symptoms, including painful blisters on his torso and an unusual rash that traced a distinct V-shaped pattern from his ears down to his chest. The lingering effects of the encounter continued to afflict Michalak long after the initial incident, portraying a complex and enduring narrative of his ordeal. Throughout the next several weeks, despite experiencing a return to normal health overall, the individual continued to face intermittent health setbacks. A notable incident occurred in September of 1967, when he once again sought medical attention due to the emergence of peculiar, sizable spots on his torso. Additionally, he reported experiencing a pronounced sensation of heat and discomfort around his neck and chest region. These symptoms were accompanied by sporadic instances of lightheadedness and significant swelling in the joints of his hands. This ongoing struggle with health issues highlighted the complexity and unpredictability of his condition during this period. Despite temporary periods of improvement, the individual faced persistent challenges and fluctuations in his well-being, underscoring the need for continued monitoring and care. Following a period of initial disinterest in his account, Michalak's claims gained traction due to mounting pressure from UFO researchers and public intrigue, prompting the RCMP and the Canadian Air Force to undertake a more thorough investigation. As the inquiry progressed, Michalak, accompanied by investigators and an electrical engineer, successfully pinpointed the exact location of the incident. To the astonishment of all involved, a distinct and unmistakable outline of the ship was discovered imprinted on the ground, becoming a pivotal piece of tangible evidence in the case's unfolding narrative. This unexpected turn of events not only heightened the seriousness of the investigation, but also fueled further curiosity and speculation among both the authorities and the wider community following the case. In addition to retrieving the charred shirt torn from his back by Michalak upon being propelled from the spacecraft, efforts were made to collect any remaining fragments. Observers also noted a concerning phenomenon in the area surrounding the craft's touchdown site. The trees and vegetation appeared to be desiccated and lifeless, indicating a significant impact on the immediate environment. This occurrence raised questions about the potential environmental repercussions of the craft's presence, hinting at the possibility of a more profound ecological disturbance than initially perceived. The occurrence at Falcon Lake ultimately lingers as an enigma, perpetuating intrigue and speculation within UFO research circles. Despite the lack of definitive answers, a significant number of experts in the field consider Stefan Michalak to be a highly credible observer, viewing his account as both genuine and sincere. Tragically, Michalak's passing transpired in October 1999, precisely 32 years subsequent to the mysterious encounter at the age of 83. So, what do you make of these interesting stories? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comment section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.